chapter six. I'm gonna try to speak up. Maybe it's the speaker on my computer, but it seems like the tones are a little bit too low sometimes. So I'm going to try to be, use my big person voice. Chapter six. On Wednesday afternoon, I raced home from school and made a frantic search of the front yard for our copy of the Stony Brook News. I found it under a peony bush in the garden. I threw my things on the ground, sat down right in the middle of the yard, and leafed through the paper until I found the advertising section. And sure enough, the fifth ad from the bottom in the third column was ours. This is what it looked like. Oh. Yeah, this, I'm so bad at this. So it's the Babysitter's Club. Need a babysitter? Make one call. Reach four sitters. Call KL53231 Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 530 to 6. We had wanted to include more information in the ad, like the other phone numbers, but when we called the newspaper, we found out they charged you per line to run an ad. Our little ad was already pretty expensive, and we'd had to use our entire first week's club dues to pay for it. Still, the ad was awfully exciting. It was fun being in the newspaper. Hey, Christy, what are you doing? Claudia came running across our lawn, her knapsack jouncing against her back. Look, I exclaimed. Here it is, our ad. Ooh, let me see. Claudia dropped to her knees beside me, and I jabbed at the ad. Wow. Now, if we can just finish handing out those flyers today, she said, we might actually get some calls on Friday. I know. I felt like squealing and jumping up and down. Let's get Marianne to help us. Okay, I said. And Stacy? No, she's busy this afternoon. She told me so in school today. What's she doing? Don't know. Come on. Are you ready? Let me just put my books inside, I said, and see if Kathy got here yet. She's babysitting for David Michael today. Kathy and David Michael were playing Candyland on the back porch, so I grabbed, nope, the last of the flyers from my desk and ran outside to Claudia. My mom Xeroxed five more yesterday. That's all I have left, I said. I've got six more. We found Marianne, who also had six left, and we took off on our bicycles for Quentin Court, which is a few streets away from Stacy's house. There, we put the rest of the flyers in mailboxes. Again, not legal. Done, I said to Claudia and Marianne. They grinned at me. Now I guess we just sit back and wait for calls. Right? Right. Two days later, the members of the Babysitter's Club gathered eagerly in Claudia's bedroom. Even though the flyer said for clients to call us between 5.30 and 6, we all managed to show up early. I was the first person there. I knocked on Claudia's bedroom door, which now had an official-looking sign on it reading... I am the worst at this. I truly am. The Babysitter's Club, hours Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5.30 to 6. Come in, called Claudia. It was only 4.30, oh, it's really early, when I entered her room, but I found her sitting cross-legged on the bed with the phone in her lap, one hand clutching the receiver. The phone's not going to run away, you know, I greeted her. Claudia grinned sheepishly. I know, I'm just so excited. Actually, I was too. So am I, I squealed suddenly. I dashed across the room and jumped on her bed. I've been waiting all week for today to come. What do you think will happen? Oh, this has just got to work. I know we'll have some customers. We'll have customers, won't we? I grabbed the phone from Claudia and held it in my lap. A knock came at the door. It couldn't be a customer, could it? Claudia and I glanced at each other. It's probably Marianne, I said. Oh, right, Claudia answered. Come in. The door opened. This is, what I, this is who I thought it was. It was Janine. My stomach dropped down around my knees. Janine cleared her throat. <clears throat> Ahem, she said. Oh, Lord. I've been studying your sign from out here in the hall, and I'm wondering if possibly you've made a mistake. I leaped up and ran over to the sign. I couldn't see a thing wrong with it. Babysitters was spelled correctly. Claudia had remembered the double T. She'd gotten all the abbreviations right, too. I put my hands on my hips. What? I asked. Well, began Janine primly, 
I'm not entirely sure that you have made a mistake. I'm trying to decide whether you need an apostrophe after the word babysitters. You see, without an apostrophe, the word is simply plural, meaning the club consisting of the several or many babysitters. The apostrophe after the S would make the word possessive, meaning the club belonging to the several or many babysitters. Now, either way could be right, but I'm not sure whether... Hello, everybody! Stacy's voice rang up through the stairwell like the welcome sound of a boat's horn on a foggy night. Saved, I said underneath my breath. Hi, Stace! Stacy ran up the stairs, and I spirited her into Claudia's bedroom and closed the door behind us, leaving Janine out in the hall, puzzling over the apostrophe mystery. Marianne arrived a few minutes later, luckily without running into Janine. It was 5.05. The four of us sat on Claudia's bed. Nobody said a word. At 5.10, Claudia got up, took a shoebox labeled sneakers out of her closet, opened it, and handed around some jawbreakers. As usual, Stacy refused. At 5.25, I began staring at my watch, following the minute hand around and around. 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, At exactly 5.30, the phone rang. I screamed. Oh no! I don't believe it! cried Marianne. Claudia spit out her jawbreaker. I'll answer it, I'll answer it! She, she shrieked. She jerked up the receiver and said politely, Good afternoon, Babysitter's Club. Then she made a face and handed me the phone. Christy, it's your mother. I spit out my jawbreaker too. Mom! I exclaimed as soon as I got on the phone. These are our business hours. You're not supposed to... What? You do? Oh, I calmed down. Please hold for a moment. I put my hand over the receiver. Mom needs a sitter for David Michael, I cried. Kathy can't come next Wednesday. Everyone suppressed shrieks. I've got our appointment book right here, said Claudia. Now let's see, Marianne, you have to go to the dentist that day, and I have art class. That leaves you, Claudia pointed to me, and Stacy. Wait, what should we, what should we do? No one says that, it just says it in the, the narrator says, what should we do? Just another sec, mom, I said. I hadn't really thought about what to do if several of us were available for the same job. Well, I began. He's your brother, Stacy said. You should get the job. But if you took it, you'd get to know some other people in the neighborhood. You'd probably meet Sam and Charlie. They're my big brothers. Brothers? Stacy's eyes lit up. Boys. But what are you going to do while I babysit? Hang around and watch? Well, I hope I'll have another job, I said huffily. You take the job, Stacy. I don't know my I don't want my first babysitter's club client to be my own mother. Okay, if you're sure, Stacy said slowly. Then she grinned. Thanks. No problem, I said. I took my hand off of the receiver. Mom, Stacy will babysit for David Michael on Wednesday. The usual time, right? Okay. Hey, where are you calling from anyway? Oh, the office. Claudia elbowed me. Quit tying up the line. Someone else might be trying to get through. I nodded. Mom, I have to get off. I'll see you in a little while. Okay. Okay. Bye. I hung up. The phone rang again immediately. This is exciting. Claudia gave me a look that said, I told you so. Can I answer it? Marianne asked. Sure, I said. Marianne picked up the phone. Good afternoon, Babysitter's Club, she said. There was a long pause. I think you have the wrong number. There's no Jim Bartolini here. She, she hung up. At 5.42, the phone rang for a third time. We all looked at each other. You get it, Christy, Marianne said. You're the president. Okay. Hello, Babysitter's Club? Yes? Yes. Just a moment, please. I put my hand over the mouthpiece. Do any of you know a Mrs. McKeever? She lives on Quentin Court. The girls shook their heads. What's she got, said Claudia. Two kids. Buffy and Pinky, I replied. Buffy and Pinky, cried Stacy. Buffy and Pinky? Shh, I warned her. How old are they? Marianne wanted to know. I don't know. Hold on. Hello, Mrs. McKeever. We need a little information, please. How old are Buffy and Pinky? Oh, okay. 
I turn back to the members of my club. She says they're three. They must be twins. When does she need a sitter? Asked Marianne. Wednesday afternoon. Oh, I guess I'm the only one who's free then, I suddenly realized. I was dying for a new client anyway. I accepted the job and took down the information I needed. Who thinks that Buffy and Pinky are not humans? Then Mrs. McKeever asked me a zillion questions about myself. She wanted to know how old I was and how much experience I had and that sort of thing. When I hung up the phone, I said to Marianne, Hey, secretary, you've got to record these jobs in the appointment book. Oh, right. I handed her the book and she got right to work. The next two calls were for Jim Bartolini. Claudia was growing exasperated. Boy, this is weird, she said. I've gotten wrong numbers before, but no one's ever asked for Jim Bartolini. Certainly not three no ones. At 5.55, Marianne stood up. I better get going, she said. She pulled on her sweater and crunched loudly on the remaining bit of her jawbreaker. Ouch. The phone rang. Stacy answered it and handed it to me. It's your mom again, Christy. I rolled my eyes. Mom? I said. Did Kathy back out of her other afternoon, too? Oh. Oh. Oh, no, not me. I am not babysitting for them. You know how I feel. Okay, but hold on. Watson needs a babysitter for his kids again on Saturday morning. Not tomorrow, but next Saturday, I told the others. I'm not doing it. I'll do it, Marianne said. I'm getting curious about them. Aren't you curious, Christy? I was dying to see what kind of monsters Watson had. Not really, I said. Sign yourself up for the job. As Marianne was about to walk out of Claudia's room, the phone rang for the seventh time since 5.30. I'll get it, said Marianne. One last call. Hello? What? Marianne's braids practically stood on end. It's some boy on the phone, she told us. He says his name is Jim Bartolini. He wants to know if there have been any calls for him. You're kidding, exclaimed Claudia. Oh, wait a second, I said suddenly. I grabbed the phone from Marianne. Sam, is that you? No, said the voice on the other end of the phone. It's Jim Bartolini. I was wondering if... Sam, you're a rat, I cried. This is important business. And furthermore, I'm telling. I slammed the receiver down. The nerve, said Marianne. But Claudia and Stacy began giggling. I think that was sort of funny, said Claudia. You would, I retorted. Oh, come on. You have to admit that was a pretty good goof call. It's better than just, is your refrigerator running or something? I guess, I said. So the first Babysitter's Club office hour, or office half hour, ended on a sour note. And the evening didn't improve much. I went home and did tell Mom that's what Sam had done. And Sam called me a rat. And I said, I know you are, but what am I? And Sam said, I know you are, but what am I? And I shouted, you're driving me crazy. And Sam shouted, you're driving me crazy. And Mom told Sam he couldn't use the phone for an hour and sent me to my room, which suited me fine since Watson was on his way over. Shortly before Mom and Watson left on another date, I was allowed to leave my room to make a phone call. To take a phone call, excuse me. It was Claudia. I just got a job, she said. Mrs. Newton called. She needed a sitter for tomorrow, so I took the job. Mrs. Newton? That's great, Claude, I said, but I hung up the phone feeling pretty low. I usually sit for Jamie. Claudia should have told the other club members when a job was offered, not just taken it herself. Just because the main phone number was hers didn't mean she got first crack at every job that came along. And how come Mrs. Newton had called that number after six when she was probably trying to reach me? I guess people didn't pay much attention to hours and phone numbers, which was a shame, considering all the trouble we'd gone to with our flyers and the newspaper ad. This is resonating with me. I flashed the news to Marianne at nine o'clock, and she flashed back. Too bad. Well, I thought, as I went to bed that night with Louis curled at my feet, at least I've got a new client. On Wednesday, I'll, on Wednesday, I'll get to meet Pinky and Buffy McKeever. New clients are always interesting. If only I'd had some idea just how interesting they were going to be. I'm saying they're not human beings. Chapter 7 On Wednesday afternoon, I was all set for my first job through the Babysitter's Club. I couldn't wait to meet Pinky and Buffy. I'd never sat for twins before. I wondered what it would be like. Would they play tricks on me? And what could Pinky and Buffy be nicknames for? I'd find out soon enough. 
I walked over to Quentin Court right after I got home from school. I left a little early, just in case I had any trouble finding the McKeever's house. Mrs. McKeever had said the address was 52 Quentin Court. So I found the side of the street with the even numbered addresses on it and started walking. There was 22 Quentin Court, 28 Quentin Court, 34, 40, 46, and sure enough, there was number 52. I stood and looked at the house for a moment. It was a perfectly nice, nice split level, painted white with neat black shutters. But something was wrong. What was it? After a moment, it came to me. There were no signs of children. There were no toys in the yard or tricycles in the driveway, no sneakers on the front stoop or artwork in the windows. I hoped Pinky and Buffy weren't going to be boring children who wanted to spend the afternoon learning about butterflies or food groups or something. My enthusiasm was beginning to wane just a little, but I took a deep breath and marched myself straight to the front door. Ding dong! Silence. No running feet or shouts like I would hear when I rang the Newton's bell. After a few moments, the door was opened. A plump, pleasant-looking young woman stood on the other side of the screen, smiling. Well, I thought at least Pinky and Buffy's mother doesn't look boring. Hello, she said. Hi, I'm Christy Thomas. I'm here to babysit for Pinky and Buffy, the twins. There was a pause, and then the woman said, Yes, won't you come in? I stepped inside into a very pretty room. But again, something seemed wrong, and it took me a moment to figure out what it was. Maybe they're gerbils. Then I realized, Pinky and Buffy must have been not only very boring three-year-olds, but very careful three-year-olds. The reason the room was so pretty was because it was full of glass and china. Big oriental vases, little glass statues, even plates that were displayed on delicate stands. Everything was breakable. In our house, what with David Michael and footballs and baseballs and friends coming over all the time, breakable stuff is practically against the law. Then I saw that the area we were standing in, the foyer and the living room, was blocked off with baby gates. That explained the china, but it didn't seem to be very nice for Pinky and Buffy. It also occurred to me that I couldn't hear any children's voices or giggling. Suddenly I began to feel suspicious. What had I gotten myself into? The McKeevers were strangers to me. Maybe I'd been lured into... No, that was silly. At breakfast that morning, when I told my mother where I would be after school, she just raised an eyebrow. She hadn't said, don't go, Christy. We'll never see you again. I smiled brightly at the woman. So, I said, where are Pinky and Buffy? Oh, they're in the laundry room, she replied. The laundry room? Were they being punished? I'd gotten angry with David Michael a few times, but I'd never stuck him in the laundry room. Let me introduce myself, the woman went on. I am Miss Hargreaves, Mrs. McKeever's niece. Mrs. McKeever is away for several days, which is why we need help with Pinky and Buffy. I have an important appointment this afternoon, and we find that we need someone with Pinky and Buffy at all times. Well, if they were only three, that was... What was she expecting? They're a bit unruly, Miss Hargreaves added. Oh, I said knowingly, wondering where the signs of unruliness were in the quiet house. Well, that's okay. I know all about unruly. I've got three brothers. Do you? I nodded. Well, let's go get them out of the laundry room. They're probably ready to play. Maybe we could all take a walk to the brook. That would be lovely, replied Miss Hargreaves. But it might be difficult for you to manage. How big are these um, beings? Oh, I've had lots of experience. That's fine, then. Are Pinky and Buffy boys or girls, I asked. Well, it doesn't matter, of course. It doesn't? But Buffy's a boy and Pinky's a girl. Oh, that's easy to remember, I said. I was trying to sound pleasant, but already I had a very bad case of the creeps. Here we are, Miss Hargreaves announced. We were standing by a door next to the kitchen. Now get ready. These two monsters of my aunt's will practically break the door down, she said affectionately. My eyes opened wide. They will? Stand back. I stood back. I wished I could stand all the way back at my house. Miss Hargreaves opened the door. Two huge, fluffy, 
drooling, barking, St. Bernard's hurled themselves into the hall, almost knocking each other and Miss Hargreaves over. I shrieked. Do I have to take care of them too? Two, repeated Miss Hargreaves. Who else is going to help you? No, I mean, do I have to watch them plus Pinky and Buffy? Oh, my dear. Those are Pinky and Buffy. But, but, I sputtered. I'm a babysitter, not a dog sitter. Miss Hargreaves looked confused. I don't know what arrangements my aunt made, she said at last. But here are the dogs, and here you are, and I have to leave. But, but, oh, it's not so difficult, she went on. They need to be outside as much as possible. Our yard isn't fenced in. Maybe they should change that. So you may either take them out on their leashes or stay with them in the backyard. If you play with them, they won't run away. Now, their footballs are in the box by the back door, their leashes are hanging on the peg above, and at 4.30 they need their chow, a can apiece, and they can each have one mailman cookie as a treat. The emergency numbers are posted by the phone in the kitchen just in case. Do you have any questions? I shook my head dazedly. Buffy and Pinky leaped around, glumphing after Miss Hargreaves as she put on her coat and went out to meet the cab that had come to pick her up. Shaking, I let the dogs out in the backyard, remembering to bring their footballs. I tossed a red football gingerly toward them as they ran ahead of me. I wasn't sure what they'd do with it. Louie usually runs half-heartedly after a football and then sort of forgets to fetch it. Not those two. They dove for the ball, crashing into each other. One of them got it away from the other, but I couldn't tell which one. They looked identical. I got down on my knees and clapped my hands. Okay, boy, bring it here, I called, not caring whether the boy was Pinky or Buffy. Whichever one it was came barreling straight toward me. I knew that game all right. Louis likes it too. He runs for you, then turns at the last second and veers around you. You can almost see him grinning, but not this dog. He ran right over me. I was lost in a whirl of fur and claws and playful woofs. You really haven't lived until a dog has stepped on your face. I sat up and rubbed my cheeks and eyes. Nothing seemed to be bleeding, so I stood up shakily. I looked around. Oh no, the dogs were gone. I thought Miss Hargreaves had said that they would stay in the yard with me. Maybe they didn't stay with people they'd practically knocked unconscious. Pinky, I shouted. Buffy, nothing. Pinky, Buffy. I ran to the front of the house. No dogs. I looked up and down the street. No dogs. I ran to the backyard and looked again, and there they were. Not in the McKeever's yard, but in the yard next door. They were racing toward me, heading for a clothesline. Pinky, Buffy, no! Too late. They streaked through all the clothes and came to a screeching halt about two feet from me. One was wearing a small blanket draped over his, her, tail. The other had a slip in his mouth. Bad dogs, I cried. Sit, sit! I took the blanket and the slip from them and glanced nervously at the house next door. It seemed pretty quiet. Maybe no one was home. Thank goodness the clothesline seemed okay except for the missing blanket and slip. I wanted to return the things, but what about Pinky and Buffy? If I went into the other yard, would they follow me? Would they run away? I didn't know what to do. I almost didn't care. But just then a car pulled in the driveway of the house. Luckily, the driveway was on the other side of the house from where I was, but I knew I'd better do something fast. Someone could come out at any moment to bring in the laundry. Okay, you guys, I said to the dogs. Look, here are your footballs. I began walking slowly backward toward the clothesline. The dogs crept after me as if they were stalking the balls. I reached the clothesline. The dogs were still following me. Come on, I whispered tantalizingly. I held the balls under one arm, pinned the blanket and slipped crookedly to the line and raced back to the McKeever's yard at top speed. The dogs ran after me. They liked that game. Good for them. They could follow me all the way into the house, which was just what they did and just where I wanted them. We stayed inside for the rest of the afternoon since I didn't trust the dogs outdoors anymore, even on their leashes. I watched TV. The dogs chewed on their footballs. Anytime they started to get rowdy, I just held open the door to the laundry room and they calmed down. By the time Miss Hargreaves returned, I had decided something important. The members of the Babysitter's Club should keep a notebook. Each time one of us finished a job, we should write it up in the notebook and the others should read about it. 
That way we could learn about each other's experiences. With a little luck, we wouldn't make any mistakes more than once. For instance, no more dog sitting. I ran home eager to start the notebook. My first Babysitter's Club job was over. I had earned $3.50. That was a good amount, I think, at that time.